Hey everybody, I just got back to Hong Kong from LA and I have a new Blue Boo phone waiting for me. This is the Blue Boo S8. So you might remember that right before I was leaving for LA, last week I was rushing to unbox this phone, the Blue Boo um, S1. So this one surprisingly took good photos, so I'm excited to test the Blue Boo S8. I am actually flying to uh, Seoul in Korea again later this evening. So I have another phone coming this afternoon. It's a Meiju M7, uh, M7 Note. So I'll be unboxing that when I'm in Korea. This one, I'll get it out of the way in Hong Kong. So the S8, as the name implies, it's a clone of the Samsung Galaxy S8. It has the same 18 by 9 aspect ratio. And, you know, and don't just say I'm just um, insulting the company. Even the marketing... Um, campaign if you look at all the photos it just implies it's just like the kind of Samsung Galaxy S8 so this seems to be a pretty bare bones unboxing okay so you have a sim ejector tool a rubber case papers oh nice a protector it's plastic a screen protector not tempered glass and a note, a thank you note from Sky Lee, CEO of Blue Boo. And now, oh, headphone jack to USB-C adapter. So this phone doesn't have a headphone jack. I am not liking that trend. So USB-C to charge. And a power outlet. This is the China leg, which can also be used in Korea and Europe, I think. Oh man, there isn't that plastic film on the screen that I love peeling off so much. Instead, it's just this little thing, so... Okay. Oh, I like the back. It's, uh, I believe it's glass. It's kind of shiny and reflective. Fingerprint reader below the dual cameras. I'll have to check to see if this is a real dual camera or not. Okay, so let's put it side by side with the obvious influence of Samsung Galaxy S8. Pretty impressive considering this phone is it's a heck of a lot cheaper. I don't have the exact price on me. I, I will have it later in the video and also the link in the description. But So you look at the top bezels. It's a little bit larger than the Samsung Galaxy S8 but not by that much. The bottom bezel, same thing. It's a little bit taller. The phone has a very obvious curved glass back. So it's actually um, not symmetrical like on the Samsung device because you know um, on Samsung device, the back and the front curve at the same time to meet in the middle. So that is not the case with the Blue Boo S8. You see that the back curves a lot more. Feels really good in the hand of the phone. So um, let's put them side by side really quick. So this is next to the Samsung Galaxy S8. You see that the Blue Boo S8 is a little bit wider, it's by a tad, and it's virtually the same height. The screen is, wow, it's almost the exact same screen size, I think. Let me get English on there. So let's compare this to the Vivo V7. This phone's back is so nice. I love this matte metal finish. So this is also a... Um, this is also a slim bezel 18 by 9 phone. So you compare the two side by side. So Vivo's bezels are actually a little bit slimmer on the bottom. And a little bit slimmer on the top. In fact, are the Vivo bezels slimmer than... Yeah, the Vivo bezels are about the same size as the Galaxy Bez bezels. So this I did a hands-on on this too if you're interested in watching. Um, please just go back through my history. So yeah, well, the Blue Boo S8 feels really good in the hand. This is the Blue Boo S1. So it's interesting, they released two new phones with two different design um, features. So this is obviously inspired by the Xiaomi Mi Mix. And then this is inspired by the Galaxy S8. So Blue Boo... They have a very unique Android skin, although it's it's mostly stock actually, there's not a lot of bloatware, but you see how the app icons are quite different from, you know, like the Gmail icon, that's definitely not how Google likes it. So this is Blue Boo's own skin. I'm not sure what I think of it yet, I will try it out on S8, 
So I'm gonna try it out in the in Hong Kong this afternoon, and I'll probably do the video. If I don't have time, I'll fin I'll do the video in Seoul and upload it when I'm in Seoul. I'll be in Seoul in like ten hours, so I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I played with the Blue Boo SA for about two hours, and um. I'm liking the phone's hardware a lot, mostly, you know, the screen, the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. So let's talk hardware a little bit. Um, you have a 5.7 inch display. On the bottom of the device is a USB-C port and a single speaker grill, no headphone jack. On the right side of the device is just a single uh, power button, top SIM tray, and on the left, a very thin volume rocker. So that's it, it's a pretty bare bones design. On the back, you have dual cameras and a fingerprint reader I quite like the location of it right under the dual cameras. It looks pretty good. So the camera, um, the specs look good on paper, but unfortunately um, it doesn't perform that well. I'll get into that later. So let's dig into device info, which is what I usually do. It's just to check out the specs, you know, um, officially, because you can't always go by the website. So you have the display. It's a 1440 by 720 panel. So the device has 32 gigs of internal storage and only 3 gigs of RAM, so that's kind of low. But this phone is only selling for about 150 bucks actually, so it's very very cheap. So you see here, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, you only get about a little over 20 out of the box. I downloaded a few apps, so you get maybe like 23, 24 gigs of storage out of the box. So the camera, as mentioned, on paper it looks good, 13 megapixel, um, but uh, I'll get into it later. Photos are a bit disappointing. So the battery, you have a... Okay, that's not right. I'll check the site. Okay, so the battery inside is a 3450 milliamp. So that should be very good to power this device all day considering it's only a 720p display. So um, let's talk about the obvious. Yes, this phone looks just like the Samsung Galaxy S8. Uh, clearly influenced by it. And you know, it looks really good. I, I mean, yeah, it's not original at all, but this design looks great. It's, it feels very good in the hand because of the 18 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's easy to grip. I can reach all the way across. And you can even bring down a notification tray by swiping anywhere on the screen, which is great. So now there is something I want to point out, which is quite interesting. Earlier in my hands-on, I mentioned that uh, Blue Boo has a very unique tick on the software I mean, earlier during the unboxing, I mentioned that Blue Boo has a very unique software, which I showed you in the Blue Boo S1. But the Blue Boo S8 has a completely different software. I didn't, I haven't put a skin on this yet. This is how the software looks. So it looks completely different from the software on the S1. It's like almost like it's like two different companies. See, like on the S1, you can't bring down a notification shade by swiping from the middle, but here you can. So I think I prefer the S8 software, actually. It's it's very bare bones, so I just looked inside. There's not there's no gesture shortcuts whatsoever. So for example, I can't double tap on the screen to turn it on. I can't draw a circle to bring up flashlight. I can't do any of that. It's very bare bones, but unfortunately, there's a lot of bloatware. So you look in the apps. These are all the systems apps. I mean, look at how many there are. Like a lot of them, it's like useless, like free share, uh, anti-theft, and then this keyboard. It comes with this Kika keyboard, which is terrible, and I can't delete it. So it's a system app, so I can't delete it. And just like clone, and then there's like this thing called freeze. I think what it does is, let me turn it back on. So I turn it off already. Freezer. So the freezer, basically what it does is let you put an app in there and I'm assuming it puts it to sleep, it will make your phone go faster. But then why not just let me delete the app? Or if, why do I need to freeze the app for the phone to go faster? If the app, it's not running at all, it, should, it shouldn't affect my phone, right? So I have no idea what this freezer thing is. So I just turn it off in the setting. So pretty bare bones setup. Let's check out the, the screen. Because obviously, if you're getting a phone with slim bezels, one of the, the best parts is you get to watch full screen media on it. Unfortunately, um, this phone doesn't give you the option to crop um, videos into 18 by 9 format to fill up the whole screen. So when you're watching something, uh, when you're watching a video, so you end up seeing two black bars on the side, which is letterboxing, because most videos on the web are still 16 by 9 so it's not built to fill up the whole screen. 
on the Vivo V7 and the Samsung Galaxy S8, they give you an option to tap a button to fill up the whole screen by cropping a little bit off the top and bottom. Some people don't like that, but I like it. I think if you have a phone that's almost bezel-less, I, I don't want these giant black bars. So you are able to hide the navigation buttons by just tapping the buttons, and after that, Instagram stories look great because Instagram stories actually fill up the entire screen, unlike YouTube videos. So somebody left a comment saying I'm like obsessed with Instagram. I mean, I'm not, but I just feel like if I'm testing a phone and I need to show a full screen a video, then Instagram, it's quite good, right? Because this is the most immersive as you can get. So the screen, despite being only 720p, actually looks pretty good. Um, I watched a little bit of videos outdoor just to test under the sun and, and it was it was fine. I could see everything clearly. Viewing angles are pretty solid. It's, it obviously can't compare to like the 2K display on an Elephone S8 or, or a proper Samsung device. But for 150 bucks, it's really good. Okay, so we gotta do my usual K-pop audio test. So right now, this is a 50% volume, so the speaker is pretty weak. Cause like, I can't even hear anything right now. Let's go to max volume. Yeah, so even in max volume, it's really low and you can easily muffle the speaker. So there's, so the good thing is there is no distortion because the volume is so low, but the sound is very, very flat. So you have to go to probably 100% if you're watching this outdoors or even, because right now I'm at 50 and I can barely hear this. So the speaker, it's, it's very weak, but if you use earbuds or headphones, no problems at all. So now let's move on to the camera. So um, the specs are actually 13 megapixel main lens with a supposedly 3 megapixel second lens and a 8 megapixel selfie camera. The selfie camera is actually pretty good. And they even give you the option to, they even um, copy the filters from Samsung. So, see, so I'm able to put a filter on myself. So I think um, people who love st Snapchat filters might like it. So, um, because of the dual cameras, you can do bokeh, but again, the bokeh effects does not look good. It just looks quite blur, uh, like the artificial blur. So I'll take a sample shot right now. Okay, so I just took the picture. So first, um, Blue Boo insists on putting this uh, watermark on the corner that I don't think you can get rid of. They'll probably, it's probably a bug. I'll probably be able to get rid of this after the software update. So um, it looks okay. The, the blur is a little bit, it, it doesn't really go around group that well completely. Daylight photos, let's look at some samples. Daylight photos are, are decent for a $150 phone. Like, I think this picture of the cat here, it's a little bit muted. Um, in real life, the, the cat's a lot more pink. So as you can see from all these shots, the colors are just a little bit bland. But you know what, these photos are still serviceable. When the lighting is bad, that's when problems arise. The low light photography is so bad on the Blue Blue S8, I'm wondering if this phone is broken. So right now, I'm in my bedroom with the lights off. It's uh, it's daytime right now, so there is a bit of light seeping through from the windows even though I have the curtains closed. And I do have a little bit of light outside in the living room. So the scene in my room right now, it's, it's dim, but it's not dark. Like my eyes can clearly see what I'm seeing right now. And even when you use other phones, so this is the Vivo V7. This is a mid-tier device. So you can see the camera clearly picks up the scene, although it's a little bit of digital noise. If you use a, a flagship phone like a Samsung Galaxy S8, then it, it will pick up the scene perfectly because this, this camera is excellent in low light. Even if you use Blue Boo's S1, which is Blue Boo's own phone, you can see the camera, you see that it's a little bit dim, but you can still see the frame. But now when I go on the Blue Boo s 8 camera and I turn on the camera, you see that there's nothing. It, it can't pick up anything. It's not like the camera's broken because if I move it towards a light source, you see it, it can pick up the light source from the outside and it can pick up the lights coming through the window. It just cannot pick up this cabinet at all, even though blue, even though like every other phone I own can do it 
very easily. So I'm not sure if this is a bug or, or whatnot. This is a big problem if the cameras can be this terrible in low light situations. So let me show you a sample just to show you how bad the S8 camera is. So this shot is taken with the Blue Blue S1, the bezel-less phone, in a dark living room with uh, minimal lighting. Exact same picture taken with the Vivo V7. And then now this is the Samsung Galaxy S8, obviously the best looking shot of the bunch. Now this next shot. This right here, Blue Boo S8, you can't see shit. So I really don't know why um, the camera is that bad in low light, but now let's look at video testing. Um, this is shot in 1080p. Video quality is actually pretty decent. I did not have a chance to try shooting a video at night, but I assuming the camera that is that terrible when taking photos at night, it's probably going to be pretty bad shooting videos at night too. So obviously there is no OIS, the video is a bit shaky, but again, this is a $150 phone. So performance wise, I, I, I wouldn't expect a lot from this. The chip inside is just a MediaTek 6750 um, with only 3 gigs of RAM and it's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So I ran a Geekbench just now and, and the scores are, are not that great. Uh, single core 605. That's really low, but multi-core is decent, 2229. But you know what, like it doesn't really matter about these benchmark scores. If you're using this phone for going on Facebook and surfing the web, it's fine. So you are able to jump between apps by double tapping on the on the square button, but you see that it's it's not as fast as on most other phones when it jumps around the apps, but overall, it's okay. Now let's check out gaming performance. So right now I'm running Asphalt Extreme. This is one one of the you know most graphic intensive games in Android, and I don't know if you can see through the video, but uh, you can definitely see that the video uh, the graphic quality it's a little bit inferior to when I run this game on other phones. The frame rate's also a little bit jittery, and obviously the sound it's the speaker is just so weak that um, it's very easily muffled. So right now I can't even hear anything. Let's turn off the volume. So now this is max volume. So you know, it, it ran the game fine, but um, the frame rate's a little bit jittery, and right now the phone is actually quite hot on the back, and the graphics just doesn't, the, just doesn't look as crisp as on like almost any other phone I've tried. So this phone is not a powerhouse at all, but it can get the job done. So there's also one other thing about the phone I'm kind of annoyed with. It's when you're charging the phone, the lock screen, it shows you an ad. Like, I don't know where this ad came from. Like, this is ridiculous. Why is there a freaking ad on my lock screen? You know, I can't get rid of it. So if I tap it, it'll probably take me straight to the game, right? So why is there an ad on my lock screen? Like, this is terrible. Like, but um, other than this annoyance and, and the camera being completely useless in low light, I think this phone is, I, I like it, I mean, fingerprint reader works, I, I think the back looks good, this looks a lot sexier than the iPhone S8, um, and you know, obviously not an original design, but man, like, it's it's curved around the back and the screen, the front slightly, slightly curved, so it feels really good in the hand, it feels really sturdy, like, for 150 bucks, this does not feel cheap at all. Now, obviously, when you start playing heavy games and taking photos, then you'll see, okay, this is why this phone's 180 bucks, but or 150 bucks. But just looking at the screen, if you're holding this in public, people might look at this and think it's like a new flagship phone, like you know, something you just pay like seven, eight hundred bucks for. So this is the Blue Blue S8. I will test it out a little bit more when I'm in Seoul and maybe do another video. I have a lot of phones, so I don't know if I can do a second video on this. I have uh, the Meiju M7 Note coming in like an hour, and then in a few days, actually, I'm going to get my hands on a Huawei Mate 10. So I have a lot of stuff to test, but thanks for watching.